Hey game developers, Blau from Zenfinity.net, and welcome to another Unity tutorial. Now if you've ever thought to yourself, man, there's probably a better way for me to extend this Unity component or Unity object um, by adding a helper function, uh, you were probably right. Now, what we usually think of doing is just adding some sort of helper function that we can pass a Unity component into, uh, but one thing that's very nice about C Sharp is how we can change the syntax or create new things that look like they're actually methods of some sort of class. Now, I think the easiest way is for me to just show you. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is create a new C Sharp script here. And this is gonna be a mono behavior of sorts. Um, so we'll call this uh, extender, right? Um, I'll go ahead and open this. And basically what our extender is gonna do is allow us to basically do something more interesting or extend a function in a more interesting way. So uh, I'm gonna start with the example of setting a game object uh, active to false, right? So let's say in our start function, and we're not really gonna be looking at Unity, we're just gonna be looking at how the compiler allows us to do this, right? Um, and that's what's really nice about .NET. Okay, so let me show you, uh, first I'm gonna type is game object, game object dot uh, set active false, right? Um, so to begin with, game object is obviously the um, reference to the game object this component is attached to, as you can see in the document. Um, and so set active uh, basically will, you know, deactivate everything on the script, right? So if I look in Unity, that's basically what this check mark is. Uh, anyway, so when we set active, um, we see, okay, we're, yeah, grabbing our game object that set active false, right? But what if I have some sort of reference, right, to a um, target, right? So for example, I have a transform target. Now, uh, I want to say target dot set active false, right? But notice how transform, you know, doesn't have a definition for set active, so we just straight up cannot do this, right? So what we have to do is reference the target's game object, right? And boom, uh, we all of a sudden, violate the law of Demeter, um, which is to only talk to your neighbor, right? Um, and so what we're doing here is talking to our neighbor's neighbor, and that's kind of something ugly to do in code, right? Uh, and in code, you really want your code to be organized, otherwise you're going to have a bad time, um, first off, developing, um, second off, extending, and other people have a harder time reading your code, right? So you always want your code to look as neat as possible, don't repeat yourself, law of Demeter, etc. Right, okay, so um, to begin with, uh, or actually I guess to continue with, I'll show you, you know, one, or I guess the most intuitive thing we would do uh, is, you know, create a helper function here, right? So public void um, set uh, transform active, right? So then we take a boolean active and then a uh, transform target, right? Okay, uh, so now what we do here is we can say target dot game object dot set active active, right? Uh, and you can see this is kind of getting messy, but uh, it's a little bit more organized, right? So we can say, uh, you know, set transform active target, right? Okay, and uh, now we say false, boom. Okay, so now we have a helper instead of our function. You know, we're not violating law of Demeter. But there's no, I mean, like we've, now we're passing a transform in here. Um, it's not my favorite thing to do, and it's one of the reasons why I think people complain about the open source. It's like, well, um, I can't, you know, I can't add extensions to this, so I have to have ugly code, right? That's just one small reason. Um, okay, so, so that works, um, but notice how this is only for a transform, right? So now we can say public rigid body target rig, right? Um, now, if I pass this in, we have that problem, right? So first off, um, what we can do is change this to a generic, right? So we can say a generic of C, and now we say C target, uh, and perfect, we can pass in a target rig, right? But notice, um, we don't have a definition for game object on a generic C, right? So we wanna say where, um, where C is a type of component, right? So now we can reference the game object's component, and we can pass in either a target, a rigid body, um, you know, a transform, or any other component. Okay, perfect, right? 
Uh, so that's looking pretty good. Now, what if I want to go even further and make this not look ugly? You know, like what if I could say target dot set active and straight up make it look like it was a game object because um, you know maybe that's just a nicer way. That way, I don't have to keep saying target dot game object had to do this or you know set transform active. Um, and so what's nice about C# -sharp again is that we actually can do that. We can make this possible. Um, and how we do that is with a static class and an extension function, right? So um, I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to create a public static um, set active extenders, right? Uh, and also call this a class, sorry. Okay, so now we have a static class. We can't make a new one of it. A static class is never really instantiated. It's just a thing there that we can store static stuff in, right? So we have a public static void set transform active, right? Okay, we're going to have a component C, right? And so here is where uh, it starts to become interesting, right? So we say this component, uh, component, and then we say bool active. Right? And then we want to add this where C is a type of component at the end again, right? Um, you know, in this way, this way we're sure that uh, we actually have you know, a component type again. Uh, otherwise, again, if I, if I remove this, then we'll see the compiler error where target does not necessarily have a game object attached, right? OK, so uh, perfect. Now what, do I'm, what I'm going to do is just type in component.gameObject.setActive active. OK, boom. And you're like, OK, well, there are still two things in here, right? Um, yes, but on the other end here, target rig dot set active. Uh, and then we say um, false, right? And we actually, we can say we, we remove this transform here. OK, and now we see target rig dot set active false. And notice, notice what happens. The compiler is not throwing an error, and it's working perfectly. And I've just extended this, right? And, this, and it looks like this is a rigid body function, or a transform function, or a component function, you know? Um, and I'll remove all this, you know, not great version. And so this is basically uh, what we're trying to do here. Now, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and show you it uh, quickly inside of the editor, right? Um, so actually, I'll show you again the code just. You have a static function inside of a static class, and you use the keyword this on some sort of object. And now we can just say that this object is a type of components, and that way we can use component functions and make an extension based off of those. OK, so moving on, uh, in a start function, we set something to uh, active false, right? So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create an empty object here. Um, and I'll call this the. I'll call this the player, right? And then I'll make another, here, I'll make a UI thing. Uh, let's say an image. Um, OK, so now our player uh, is going to have a, an extender. And I'll drag in this image here into transform. Nope. Oh, uh, and I'll hit, uh, I'll hit play. And I believe it'll just, yep, see the image um, all of a sudden disappears because it's set active to false, right? So we see there it's unchecked. And then if I unplay, it's checked. So um, yeah, that's basically everything I wanted to show you in this episode, uh, or tutorial, rather. Um, basically, there's a good way of extending Unity objects and making it look like they were um, originally in Unity. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. If it helped you, I hit the Like button and hit Subscribe for the rest of these and more. And uh, if you want to make your first game faster, First, you can check out this ebook in the top right right now if you hit the card, and that's an ebook on all the tools you need for making your first game. And there's also a free sample video from our course on how to create your first game uh, in the card right now. If you want to check that out, it's totally free. And with all that said, have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.